But first, in his usual bombastic way, Energy Minister Chris Bowen thought he'd scored a king hit on the coalition with his claim that converting to nuclear all of our existing coal-fired power stations would cost something like $380 billion. The Liberals are saying we have too many renewables. They say their answer is nuclear. They think the answer is to put the most expensive form of power available into our grid. When we have no nuclear industry, we have no regulations in place, it would cost even more than it's facing in other countries. Now, that's a gargantuan sum, sure, but you can bet the anti-nuclear zealot in Bowen has done his best to inflate the estimate. And it's actually pretty close to the upper estimate for the over-the-life cost of the nuclear-powered submarine fleet that Labor supports. I've also seen it mentioned that Bowen's estimate factors in 70 new reactors when experts say Australia might only need 10. So it's an overblown costing, making it hard to see this as anything other than modelling built on politics and not any engineering science. But on this, Labor has form. Before the last election, Labor estimated the cost of the new transmission lines needed to obtain 82% of our power from renewables at $80 billion. And that was before the cost of the Hume link blew out from $1 billion to $5 billion. And also the cost of Snowy 2.0, well, that ballooned from 2 to $12 billion. Meaning there's no way new transmission lines are going to cost taxpayers $80 billion. We'll try tripling it and then some. But of course, if nuclear reactors went on the side of our existing coal-fired power stations, well, none of these new transmission lines would be necessary because we could use all the existing infrastructure. And the great thing about nuclear is it's not only emissions free, if that's really essential, but it's also 24 seven. And that certainly is essential for where to stay a modern industrial economy. Why can't it work here? If the United States can do the same, if the United Kingdom uh, and France can do the same, why can't it happen here? The analysts talk about Chris Bowen's plan costing between 1.2 and $1.5 trillion. So going nuclear, unlike going renewables, would eliminate the need for costly backup power for batteries, pumped hydro, diesel generators, gas, and for 70% of the time on average, of course, we know that we currently rely on fossil fuels. As it stands, nuclear power is used by more than 30 countries around the world, including the US, France, the UK, and Canada. Indeed, the Canadian province of Ontario, where nuclear energy makes up around 60% of their grid, well, their energy bills are half the cost of what we're finding in Australia. So on balance, Bowen's attack on nuclear power really looks more like an own goal than a political winner, especially since Labor's so-called energy transition is just not happening as planned. There's nothing like the 22,000 new solar panels going in every single day or the 40 large wind turbines in every single month let alone the 10,000 plus kilometres of new transmission lines that Bowen himself has said were needed over the next seven years to meet Labor's legislated targets. And if they were, the true cost would likely dwarf this fanciful figure from him today about nuclear. Just recently, the Net Zero Group, including former chief scientist Professor Robin Batten, so the real cost of making the government's legislated 2030 progress towards net zero would be, drumroll, up to $1.5 trillion. Now, that's $1,500 billion. In order to produce, amongst other things, the boundless plains of solar panels and the endless forests of wind turbines covering land in area equivalent to half the state of Victoria, needed to eliminate, of course, all our current coal-fired power. This is Labor's energy future. Meanwhile, as Chris Mitchell reminded us in The Australian today, in the first six months of this year, China approved the construction of 52 gigawatts of new coal-fired power. That's more than 50% of Australia's total annual electricity use. Just that increase alone. So not only is China not bothering to cut its own emissions, it's the chief beneficiary of our efforts to reduce emissions. 
because nearly all our solar panels and nearly all our wind turbines are imported from China. So we make ourselves poorer, don't we, to make China richer and we make no difference whatsoever to global emissions. Now, seriously, how smart is that?